Ms. Chase, in the legislature, did you support the spending under Janet Napolitano as governor? And can you speak a little bit more about the spending bills that you sponsored as a representative? I actually have a very conservative voting record on the spending bills and the budgets, and I rarely gave in to any budget until I saw that it was right for the people because budgets budgets are extremely important. You can't you can't give on anything. And you've got to protect you've got to protect everything that that's in that's the best interest and you can't be cutting corners. I supported I supported I'm sorry I've kind of lost my thought here. I was part of the supporting the budgets and the tax breaks from the for I just lost on here. Okay. I've got something. I actually helped push over the five hundred million dollars in income and property tax cuts for residents and businesses and this was in two thousand six. This was one of the most important ones that we had. And uh, it takes a while to learn and to get into what you need to know about the budget. It's not an easy thing. But at that time, when the two most important bills came through, I was I worked there and I got that I got that through with in 2006. Miss Chase, can you explain if you have I'm sorry, explain your relationship with Mr. Johnson and have you accepted any campaign donations from him? And I'm assuming that's George Johnson. I know Mr. Johnson as well as the rest of you. He has been uh, someone who's been involved in the committee for many years. I have accepted campaign contributions from many people, and many of them are sitting right out here. And uh, people who choose to support my campaign, I'm thankful for. I just see another person that is just recently maxed out. And uh, again, I appreciate the support that I have. And I know that probably behind this question is the concern of do I cater to people who contribute to my campaign? And I will tell you just briefly, when I was in the legislature, there was a lobbyist, one of the top lobbyists in Arizona, who was very aggravated me. After a period of time, he said to me, he said, I have raised more money for you than anybody. He says, and you have not voted for one of my bills once. And my answer to him was, you don't have good bills. I can't support them. To every candidate up here, I would like to know how each candidate feels about the curious compromise. The people have already spoken. The people in the town of Florence don't want the compromise. I support local control. I support what the people want. If there anything comes down the line that is needed to be done or just or, or uh, taken care of by the county, then of course that's we're going to be in, involved in that whatever we need to do. But the bottom line is that people have spoken, they don't want it, and I'm going to support my people. Okay, this is another one for the entire panel, and this is a question that is obviously very heavy on the hearts of anybody who's lived in Santana Valley for more than a few weeks, and we're going to talk about a corporation. First of all, can you tell us your views on incorporation for or against? And what do you think the economic impacts will be to Pinal County and to the would-be incorporated area uh, for, as far as money coming from the state or being lost from the state? And we will start, ladies first, Ms. Chase. Well, thank you so much. I happened to be in the legislature when Maricopa decided to incorporate, and there was a lot of problems there. Things moved too fast. There's a lot of mistakes made. We still have a lot of questions. A lot of people are still unsure whether they want to incorporate or not. And Florence has fought us on this, these last go-around. 
Again, the people need to be very involved in this decision. We've got to work out all these things. I have been working and talking with the sheriff on one of the issues, which is law enforcement, and how we're going to cover that and the cost. This just takes a whole lot of planning and input from the community, from the people, and with proper permitting and proper planning, then we can do it the right way, because that's that's the way it was. It was too, too rushed last time, the same thing as with Miracle. They tried to finish up the last, in the last hours, trying to run legislation. It didn't work, so it has to be the right way. Thank you. Issues regarding being a Republican. The question that goes out to all the candidates is how long have you been a Republican and why? And there were two other specific questions uh, directed at Ms. Castillo about when she changed, when you changed your registration from Democrat to Republican, why did you do it? And Ms. Chase, when you were in the legislature, you were a Democrat, why are you a Republican now? So. Thank you very much for that question. I really like that question. I served in the state legislature from 2000 to 2006. And at that time, most of the time, I served with the Democratic Party. I had a more conservative voting record than oh, probably over half of the Republicans. And um, actually, I was always in trouble with the Democrats because of the things that I supported. I supported the issues that were important in Pinal County, family values, the, what the people wanted, what the people stood for. There came a time that there was a constant fight in anything that happened with my constituents when they needed something, things were pushed to the bottom, and others who are currently serving in this, in office at this time, in other positions, were fighting me, they were in leadership. I actually had more help from the Republicans solving problems as far as from their staff with constituent requests, such as something that you needed help with, they, that staff would help me. The bills went through bipartisan. I had so much bipartisan legislation because I had the support from both sides on the, on the issues that really mattered. I realized that I was not in the party that I belonged in, and I'm proud that I did change. I'm proud of the work that I did when I was a Democrat. I'm proud of the work that I did afterwards. And at that time, it involved securing $3 million for our law enforcement and our fire training facility, our burn building at Central Arizona College. So I got that done because I was bipartisan. But uh, my values were very different than the party. So there came a time to change, and I had a lot of support. So it was the right thing to do. Thank you. The question is, about managing a budget. Mr. McCord just spoke about his experiences. There are several cards up here asking the rest of you to please expound on your experiences also managing budgets. And there are several up here talking about there are certain departments in the county that were over budget. Um, how would you deal with it? How would you let it happen? Um, and can you speak to that? When you're in an elected position or any type of a, a position over over others, you surround yourself with the best people that you could possibly find, the experts in the field. I have some experience. I don't claim to have the most experience, but I also know that you choose the best people for the job to manage the area that they need to manage. As far as departments, I think I can directly speak to that because I've been involved in an office who has made many plans, many, many changes in their in the budget and able to expand and increase services these were repeatedly shut down by the current board of supervisors and that is totally unacceptable there are certain when when someone comes to you a leader of an organization an elected official and they come to you and they have a plan and they have everything laid out when you see that there is a way to make this happen you need to support that you don't need to take it and cut it down and prevent the growth and prevent things from happening. So I totally support, the, I understand what this question came up. I totally support 
the situation where this uh, case was, was brought up about letting someone have more of their own budget because this person is the expert in the field, not the other people on the board. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. In our county, there's a problem with, again, sorry, with the uh, Board of Supervisors continuously interfering in other departments. Will you do that as well, or will you allow elected officials to behave as elected officials? And then, for the record, I did not make that question up. I didn't make it. <laughs> 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 we'll go ahead and meet you in this case. Each, each department knows best what they need. I'm a nurse, and I worked as an industrial nurse for 20 years. And I remember just one thing that happened when they built one of the new first aid stations, and that was that uh, some engineers came in and built the first aid station. When we went in there, I took one look at it, there was a little tiny bar sink. And I immediately said, you know, this is a problem. We've got to get a big sink. I have a wound that comes in. I need a big sink. Decisions are best made by the ones who are the experts in the field. And that's the ones that you need to get in there and talk to. Again, as I said, I'm very familiar with, with uh, some situation that have, has gone on for a long time. And that is no support for one of our offices that had a very good plan. And the Board of Supervisors felt that they were more tuned in to that than, than the than the leader and the elected official. That doesn't mean that you just turn it over to them and say, oh, you're the experts, this is what you do, you talk it out. You find out why, you put, find out what the plan is, and then you work to do the best that you can to allow them to manage their budget. Because I am definitely not the expert in law enforcement, but as I said, just back to thinking about the nursing, I definitely knew a lot more about that than the engineer. You have a clear choice for supervisor. I come with no special interest groups funding my campaign so that my allegiance is to the people in District 2. Visit my website at GoMargo.com and on Facebook, Margo for Pinal County Supervisor. Then vote for me, Margo Feldmiller, on November 6th.